Welcome to In the Loop with Laura, Friends section. I'm very pleased to have Vi Seiwert with me today. She is a local lady. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. We were speaking with the producer earlier, and she was saying she's coming up to an important birthday. Do you care to <laughs> tell people? or? <laughs> I think it's just amazing. I'll be 90 next month. She'll be 90. 90 this, years old. This spring, and it's fantastic. And you are an active woman. I've heard stories from your daughter Jan and granddaughter Natalie own a yarn store in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. a very fine yarn store I encourage you to stop at. It's called Knitting Off Broadway. And they've told some stories to me about going to Italy mm -hmm. last year. We went to Italy last September. And last September, was that recent? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What was your favorite thing to see? Is it something you dreamed of doing for a while? Oh, I went to the Sistine Chapel, and and I saw the, um, I, I, we had spent a couple of days in a mo hotel next to the Arno River. Mm. And I do crossword puzzles, and I was amazed that I could actually touch the Arno River. <laughs> and that was in Florence? Yes, it was in Florence. Fantastic. Yeah, we so spent. how did you touch it? Was there a place you could go down to? Well, they, yes, because we, we were on the, the uh, lodging was right on the banks oh, wow. of, the, of the Arno River, so That's we right. saw it every day. Fantastic. And so it was fun. And you saw the David there. It was a wonderful there, trip. And the Three Graces. Yes. And then they also told me a story of how you wanted to go on, um, what is the name of the... Zip line. A zip line. You wanted to zip line. How long ago was that? Uh, two years ago, uh -huh. 2013. And that? I went to my youngest daughter, took me. And when I, she said, well, your mother, you'll have to call to make the reservations and choose the date. And when I called him, he asked how old I was. And he said, you can't go, but you can go watch your daughter go on the zip line. So when we got there, um, he, he said, are you the lady that called me? And I said, yes. And he said, you're not what I envisioned. That's great. And he said, I think you're good to go. I'll have to change my advertising because now you're, you're older than my limit. <laughs> so. I think maybe you need a t-shirt that says, not what I expected, <laughs> not what you expected. And then this last January of this year, I... I crossed another item off my bucket list. Okay. I, I did a polar plunge at the moose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever do that. Was that seriously on your bucket list? Yes. Have you always wanted to do that or just mm -hmm. recently? Yes. You're I've, an amazing woman. I would read them, you know, read about them in the newspaper and I'd say, oh, I, I think I'd like to do that. How was it? It was exhilarating. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. That was cool. Yeah, so it was nice. Do you I, recommend uh, that? I would do it again. Okay. I would. I, I, I don't know if my body would tolerate it, but I would, I would do it again. It's fantastic. Well, she's an amazing woman who jumps in with both feet, and she has been knitting for how long? you think this is yeah, this is the book I recognize this I own this and she you said she it. learned from this book yes it says price 10 cents <laughs> learn funny. how to it was in the 40s 1941 so did you buy this new and you yes. learned in 1941 mm -hmm. and you can see it's been well used yeah it is a good book mm -hmm. I've gone through my books before and kind of put some aside to give away and I have not given this one away no. it has crochet knitting tatting embroidery did you try tatting yes but I couldn't master that my mother could but uh -huh. I, I couldn't I couldn't do it so and crochet do you crochet no, I, I never crochet so you picked this up and you knitted some things, and this is an early... That's an early, very early. And it's not just that this pattern was early for her, this actual piece was an early knitted thing that she did for her brother. Mm -hmm. Is it the brother who's 92? No, this who's is my brother? youngest brother, who, okay. who, he was an orthodontist in California. And what is the story behind these mittens? We'll take a closer well, look here while she's chatting. He. He didn't like the cold weather, and he was going to college at Marquette University, and so he said, I'd like some warm socks. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I would knit him a pair, and he requested that they would be yellow. Which 
as anyone knows, is not a normal color, let alone a normal colorful wool. No. It might have been difficult to find right. the, the, the thin wool, so. yellow wool. Well, so it's maybe heavier, and I maybe suspect that he might have worn them to bed or something because mm. they're not that well worn. But then when he graduated from college, he moved to California, so then he decided to give them back. Which they're a lot of work. Sure. So, well, especially for a novice. Right, absolutely, and to put a cable in it, it's obviously a loved brother. So these are cast on from the top with a knit one, pearl one ribbing, and you go down into a cable which really neatly comes down into the heel gusset. It's very pretty. And this was tricky. I had trouble fig figuring that out. You remember out. that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> was this your first pair of socks? Yes. Wow, your knitting is so even. Yes, that was my first pair. Of isn't that amazing? I've referred to that book many, many times, and how to reverse it and all those great things. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm really glad that you found these and brought them in. And then underneath here is another little treasure that she says, she used the words easy. <laughs> quick, quick, I said they quick. Were quick. She said quick, okay. Quickly. So not necessarily easy. No, not easy, but quick, because what? you have, but you have to count all this, you know, Correct. every time, how many times you. So these are lace doilies. Maybe you can get a forward view. I don't know how well it's going to turn out against. Maybe, oh, yeah, you can see that against our backdrop. Maybe so a number of. Solid. She brought four or five. They vary four. from a, a white to an ecru, and she has put them in a starch when she um, dried them and pinned them out. So you can tell they've got a little bit of form to them. If she hadn't done them, they would be very floppy. You know, I, don't, I didn't. I don't well, like mine I that stiff. Just fine I don't like from mine this that angle stiff. Look. Doesn't that look great? I don't like mine that stiff, so I don't. Oh, you don't? No. Well, when you have that very fine thread, so this is a crochet thread that you used. Mm -hmm. Yes. And was this also in the 40s or 50s? Yes. Mm -hmm. Were you married at the time when you made these? Um, for a household thing? Yes. So let's take a look at this one. Do you mm. remember anything about how how you made them? Because usually they are circular, you cast you start, them in the center. You, you start in the center, and then you, you just you Rapidly work. Rapidly increase. Mm -hmm. you, you have to keep increasing it until you get to the, the size that you, you know, mm -hmm. that you want. Mm -hmm. well, this one looks like you knitted and then varied knit pearl because it looks mm -hmm. like... Nope, I have it backwards. You have it upside down. I have it upside down. So this is the knit side. And... Um, while you are constantly increasing, you make yarn overs, which create the holes, mm -hmm. and then you knit two together or slip, slip, knit, and putting in a clever pattern. Isn't that beautiful? This is very advanced stuff. What, what made you want to do this? Just My aunt was doing them, mm -hmm. and uh, so it was a challenge to mm -hmm. match her mm -hmm. wit. So, when I've created things like this, it's always the beginning that's so difficult because it's mm -hmm. so slippery on mm -hmm. the multiple double-pointed uh, needles. Yes. You just got to keep it together until you can get it to a place that's more stable with your right. mm. double points. I think this one might be my favorite. There we go. Now, of course, this one's my favorite. I like this one the I like this one the best. It's really pretty geometric. Mm -hmm. And Vi said she has these in a chest. Yes. And you are well known in town for being a garden woman. I have a degree in master gardener. I'm a master gardener. So I think these call out for a potted, little potted violet or something <laughs> on top of it. Put that on. Yeah, put it in a north facing yeah, window. Pretty. Well, I may just do that. They would play off each other well. And then this last little. Um, oh, how, is this an older item that you've no, created? No, it's this a, is from the 70s. Oh, that's right. So this can is, you tell us the story behind this? Well, I, I had an office accident and I was disabled. And I had a double concussion and a stroke. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even walk. Wow. And so I had to have therapy. and. 
That's where my latch hooking started, to, so I could get strength in my right arm because my this side of my body was is weaker than the it still is. And so after I graduated from the latch hooking, I went back to my knitting, and that was my first project for knitting to see if I could handle that. It's a wonderful thing to think of. We might not normally think of it, but knitting can be a form of therapy. I know that Waldorf teaching with children, which is a method of teaching, they use knitting to help teach small motor movements, and it's the same exact thing. You're retraining your mind and your muscles to make small movements in a correct way right. while producing something. And that was recommended by Mayo Clinic. Hmm. So. Uh, was it any form like crochet and knitting and... Mm -hmm. But they decided the latch hook would be better for my particular to, to, to start the strength training. That's really smart. And and so the movement. Now this is a sweet little thing we can probably look at here. You can see the seam. So it was cast on on one edge and then knit around. And here she did one row of knit, one row of purl, and on the edge she kept it knit and that causes the little bell to take place and then Curl. so a little bell in there do you have cats Pardon? do you have cats no <laughs> a cat would certainly would, adore would love this. that <laughs> yeah, they would love that but even um to decorate a whole tree or to just put on a package to give someone mm -hmm. i think i made about two dozen of those hmm. you did a wonderful job well, I thank you so much for showing us a few of your projects through the years and uh, to encourage us that just get out and move your hands. And keep busy. Keep busy, inside right. and outside. Right. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. I'm an original, someone who I have to be To say that it's overrated Hi, welcome back to In the Loop with Laura. We're here again with our friend Vi Seiwert, and she has brought some latch hook rugs that she made and was introduced to this by Mayo Clinic after she suffered several different injuries, including a stroke, as a way of strengthening her right side, which was weaker. And how many years ago was that? Oh, you said it the 70s? It was 76. So almost 40 years ago, you mm -hmm. can see she's recovered nicely. Um, a lot of people wouldn't think of producing a textile art <laughs> as physical therapy, but it's a great way to use your mind mm -hmm. and your body and create something that you've had for 40 years. Look at this beautiful rug. Her name is Violet. And so I did you, I've chose Violet, I guess. Did you uh, buy a pattern that had all the yarn? Yes, it, it came with a kit mm -hmm. I bought from Shilcraft that okay. was in Chicago, but now they're in California. And it came with all the different colored yarns. So the reason we bought this one is because it had a lot of white so that I could learn to do. And every day, of course, you had the paper pattern mm -hmm. that, that you had to look at. And at that time, I wasn't very, very, I couldn't see very well either. Wow. I didn't wear glasses until I got hurt. But anyway, every day my husband would lay out X number of pieces of yarn, and he'd say, now these you have to do before Aww. I get back for, from work. And so sometimes I would be very frustrated and have... There might be lots of tears on this rug because mm -hmm. I was very unhappy about having to do this, but mm. I'm, I'm proud that I could complete it because now it, it's a treasure. And by the time you were done, was there a little bit of improvement like yes. you could see from this point to this point? Mm -hmm. that, that's always encouraging. Yes, this but. took me about six months to do this one. And the other ones were quicker than that. But. And each day was very long, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> so here on the back, we can see that it is a mesh fabric. If it, Some people might be familiar with other kits. This is nice because it's actually 100% wool. So it's going to wear a lot longer mm -hmm. than um, an acrylic, which is what I'm a little more used to. So here's a mesh. Was the mesh colored the color that you had to do, or you no, had to look on no, that paper? No, no, the, the mesh was plain white. And the mesh is two different 
you can't see it on that one very well, but you might be able to see it on this other one. This one? No, the little blue one. Okay. You see that there, these are the bars, the, the strengthening bars, and you don't put the mesh on those. Okay. You don't put the yarn on those. You put the yarn on the straight, okay. the straight mesh. Only? The straight bars. One way. Yes, you and only, then only go one direction. It looks like the and fabric is cut a little bit larger and gets folded over. That's because I didn't want to have to bind it. So yeah, I, and I, that's I, what this binding is. Yes, I am. Um, a really wide hem tape, mm -hmm, correct? Mm -hmm. It's put over and whip stitched down. Right. And then on that fold, she had to do another, probably very difficult to get through because it's a doubled section. Double section, yeah, that's very... So some people make things like this. We've had a few different rug makers on the show. We've had a woman who crochets rugs and a woman who hooks rugs, mm -hmm. um, where you only pull up a section and go on. Right. Mm -hmm. And then this is latch, latch hook. Mm -hmm. And this is my latch hook. Okay. Um, some of you might recognize that too. We're going to pull up another uh, Oh, you're going to show here, or do yeah, you have I can any show mesh here. to show you, against? You okay. put the um, put, a, put your hand right around here. You, you put the uh, uh, yarn on that, mm -hmm. and then. Well, oh, first let's show people. It's it's got a hook on the end, a little bit deeper than a crochet hook. But the thing with a latch hook is it has this movable leg. And so when you put it through the the mesh. Uh huh. You push push it all the way through, mm -hmm. and then oh, all the way past that little past that little bar. No, past past this, but you also have to go past the mesh. Uh huh. And then when you get past the mesh, you move this over here like this. Okay. Then you pull it back through the mesh, and this automatically goes over there. Gets pulled up. And then when you pull it through, it makes a knot, and I can't show you without doing it on on something. Okay. Here, we'll, we'll do it on the back of this one. one. You push this in here like this, and you uh -huh. you have your your yarn around this needle like this, and you hang on to that, and you push it through there, and then you hook your. And I always had trouble. See, this is where you have trouble. Then right, you, that is because you have to hang be on to that, mm -hmm. and then see it catches that. Uh -huh. Ah. And when it catches that, it pulls through there, and then it comes all the way through, and you makes pull this out, and then makes a half hitch there, knot. There you are, and all your yarn has to be the same length. Right. And that's how you, and then you just keep on doing that. Yeah, that is dexterous to get yes, through, very, and then, and you, then have to, you have to pull this tight. See, and then when you don't have much strength, you're ha you're having all kinds of problems. Hmm. And so that's that's how that works. But like you said, this is a treasure. And um, I did ask her beforehand, oh, do you have it in front of your sink, not realizing it's 40 years old? <laughs> and she said, I have it on my cedar chest to cover up the scratches that my daughter used as a stage when she was tap dancing. I have a daughter who likes a stage, too, so I completely. <laughs> she started tap dancing when she was three. Did she really? Yes. Does she so, still dance? Yes. Now she oh. dances with Arthur Murray. Oh, good for and her. She, she just returned from Ashland, North Carolina. And, uh, and uh, I think she's going to San Francisco next. Wow. So. In dance, because of dancing? Mm hmm Good for her. Mm -hmm. And now you've got all of those. That probably increases the well, the value of your cedar chest, that you have those first <laughs> few scratches <laughs> from her on it. And then these, in the mm -hmm. meantime, nice, nice memories. cover it up. And let's mm -hmm. take a look at these other ones that you have made. We've got another one with violets on it. And that one was my own design. Her own design. It looks like it's inspired by the other one, mm -hmm. but lovely use of colors, and um, it's much smaller. What do you use this one for? I use it for a bath mat. Good for you. Mm -hmm. It's also wool. Yes. So was mm -hmm. this leftover yarn? Uh, this was leftover yarn I from see. the other kit, but this, I had this. to buy this. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And so that made a nice little rug. Yep, perfect. 
And then the last one, for those of you who know Vi, I've just learned this about her. She has a huge, this must have taken a lot of time. Yes, it did. It took me very long. I don't know how long, but maybe over a year. <laughs> I love At the least polka dots. It's very lively. And it's also wool or not? Mm -hmm. It's also wool. And did you start collecting kangaroos first and then find this? Or did you find this? Yes. Um, I started collecting kangaroos in 1960. Oh, wow. Uh, I was in the used car business, and I went to Chicago with my children. And the, the, uh, we were buying new car trade-ins to sell in Rochester. And the man said to me, uh, I have just the thing for you. And he gave me this little plaque, it was about this big, and he said, put that on your front door. And just as a joke, I thought, well, I'll put it on my front door. And the, the little sign said, beware of low leaping kangaroos. And of course, he bet that for my children because I had, I had six children with me all the time. <laughs> and so I, when I, by putting that on my front door, people started bringing me can kangaroos. That's wonderful. <laughs> And, uh, and so your that, low leaping kangaroos grew up to be bigger leaping kangaroos. And now I have over 2,000 over in 2, my home. <laughs> Do you still have the plaque? Yes. Is it near your front door? No. Just no, somewhere I, else? I, I don't have it on my front door anymore. So what do you do with this guy? A year's worth of work. That's amazing. Well, you have on your wall I, uh, or just here and there? I, 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 move, I move it in the back of a chair or a, uh, put, I had it for a wall hanging for a while. Mm -hmm. And right now is uh, since we moved in the, my other house, I haven't, I haven't, I've just put it away. Right. Well, I've that's thought about giving it to my grandchildren, but I, I think, I will keep it. Yep. There'll always be time for that. Right. So. Well, why don't you pull up the project that you are currently working on? It's a, uh, it's a sweater. It's a beautiful spring color. It matches what you're wearing. And that's the bag. Okay. Well, yeah, you've come. You're almost to the neck. I'm to the, the yes. I'm to the casting off stage. This is a super little project. We can. And it's going to be a little bolero like sweater. Ah. With you take a closer look at this, you can see how it's one yarn. Um, she's just using two stitches, the knit and the purl. At the cast on, this is a really pretty moss stitch. It's not a normal ribbing, um, but it varies back and forth, so it looks nubbly. And then all it is is knitting, and every once in a while it looks like maybe four pearls. Mm -hmm. And giving those little yeah. bars, and it just right. is something like that. Five, you said? Yeah, there might be a flaw or two. Well, that makes it <laughs> wonderful and a wonderful example of what a human can do and not a machine. Right. That's really pretty. That's a really pretty springtime bolero or just any time if this is your color and you certainly can. I, so. I think it'll be nice. It'll be lovely. Thank you so much for bringing this in. I hope that everybody's been encouraged to try something new to exercise your mind and your body and, and right. talk to Vi. Go out and garden. It's getting time. Yep. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your wealth of experience. You're most welcome. To say that it's overrated Crochet fashion's a thing of the past But just because it's complicated Doesn't mean my grandma swear to work fast Look at me 